Hello everyone, and welcome to Kerbal Space Program with me, J.D. Colley. Today we are beginning our moon missions. As you can see here, we've got a rocket on the launch pad. It's called the Elucidator 1. And uh, before we get too far into our launch, let's go see what's inside that payload fairing and what we'll be landing on the moon. Okay, so here is our Elucidator vessel used to clear up the mystery the clairvoyance has uh, provided by landing on either the moon or Minmus, probably the moon at this point because our uh, Clairvoyance 2 is still on its way to Minmus and I don't really want to wait for it to take all the time to uh, scan things. So we are going to probably go to the moon first. We also have several contracts that are asking us to return science from the moon. So yeah, I think that'll definitely be where we're going to go. So obviously we have our basic lifter stage here which provides us, you know, the good 3800 delta V. We're just going to pull that off real quick so we can see what's inside. And we have ourselves just a very basic, basic stage just to provide a few thousand delta V extra to get to the moon and slow down around it so that we can get into orbit. And then a final very small stage. And this thing is a little bit different than what I normally build. It has a cluster of engines on it, the little mini aero spikes, which have very nice low profile when their surface attached. And uh, then just some legs, some science stuck on there and some RTGs. Now I, I, put, I clipped the RTGs in there because I like the way they look better. And honestly, I, you know, I could fit it just fine. I don't feel like I'm cheating because it's not as if it's something I can't do. It's not a huge deal. I'm not like, you know, packing eight engines in here. So whatever, it's cool. Uh, and I, I will clip things occasionally just because I think it looks better. But um, yeah, so that we have those little tiny uh, engines in there, little aero spikes that should give us a, enough uh, thrust to really slow down. If we go to the moon, we can see that our thrust to weight ratio is 13, which uh, yeah, we should be able to slow down just fine. So yeah, uh, this is our little little vessel, and uh, I think we'll be able to land pretty easily. The only challenge, of course, will be to time our landing with when we have a signal to work with. And as I look at this right now, I see I've forgotten to put on a comms DTS, so I'll have to do that before we launch. But yeah, I'm excited to see this thing as we put it up there. And we join our, what is it, Elucidator 1 high over the moon. We've just barely barely switched to the moon's sphere of influence. So let's grab some science and transmit this back to Kerbin. It is hot or cold. Hmm, thermometer. That is that is actually something to think about. Okay, and our magnetometer scan as well. A little bit more science. And then we're going to save the rest of these because all of these require a reset if they want to take more science and we can't afford a reset because we have no scientists. So we're going to go for maximum science while on the surface of the moon. We already have our maneuver node planned and ready to be executed, so we're just going to wait for that to happen. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could do this manually because, as you can see, the maneuver node would be facing Kerbin, but I didn't want to take any chances. I really don't like um, manually piloting probes that have a potential to disconnect while uh, approaching the maneuver. Um, I would prefer to fly manually normally, but it's just not a good idea in these cases because bad things can happen. So that's alarm clock telling us that we need to be paying attention to this probe now, which we are. And uh, I also would point out that I don't have MechJab enabled, which means, or not enabled, I don't have it on this probe, so I don't have it enabled, obviously, for this flight, and so I don't know how much Delta V I have. Oh, look at the moon, hello. Nor do I have uh, any of the normal information I would normally be using, so this will be all manual aside from the maneuver execution. Uh, which should be interesting. We're gonna again transmit our temperature scan and our magnetometer scan. Fortunately, both of these are very low cost uh, in terms of electric charge, which is good because we don't have a lot of that to spare. And we appear to be, let's turn that to retrograde, we appear to be in orbit of the moon. Excellent. I don't think we have any contracts that require us to be in orbit of the moon right now, but we do have some contracts that are asking us to return science. So, um, hmm. See, now this is what I was talking about. Uh, interesting challenge. If we want to land on the sun side, the bright side of the moon, we actually will not be able to uh, control it when we do so. I don't think that's a good idea, personally. Um, we're going to land on the dark side, uh, but we will be able to see what's going on thanks to ambient light. Oh, hey, look at that! Look at that, there's the moon arch. That was some extremely fortunate timing. Or, no, that's not the moon. Okay, it is, okay. 
I was like, I thought there's only one, but I didn't think we were over that uh, crater right now. But we are. We're at the very edge of it. It's on the northern lip. So there you go. That is one of the Mooner Arches. Don't see that every day. That's cool. Okay, so... Hmm. What we could do is just land right now. I think that's what we're going to do. So we're going to drop a quick save just to make sure nothing horrible happens. And it's a good thing that I did because we had a bit of a problem there. Um, I was able to land successfully, but I, uh, I didn't get it on recording because about halfway through the descent, uh, my hard drive filled up and I didn't know about it. So we're going to be doing that over again. It's not going to be a big deal, though. Fairly simple. Sorry about that. That's the doorbell. And uh, okay, let's just come in for a landing right about there should be good add a maneuver node and yeah should be a fairly simple landing it was the last time actually the last time was awesome I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't catch it on video because uh, I aced a suicide burn but oh well get to see if I can do it again right just show how expert I really am <laughs> which means I'm going to crash. So we're going to uh, toggle our magnetometer so it doesn't, you know, blow up. Let's close our solar panels as well for the same reason. We don't want to break them unnecessarily. Well, okay, I can't really think of a necessary time to break them, but breaking them now would definitely be extremely unnecessary. So let's just uh, accelerate time now down to 25 seconds to uh, our maneuver node because obviously we're not going to be burning on the other side of the maneuver node. Normally you'd split them in half, like half the burn before, half after, but that seems like that would be a poor decision in this particular case, since the other half of the maneuver node in this case would be um, the ground. So, yeah. We want this in surface mode, and you can stop wiggling now, thing. I'm just going to do this manually, turn that off. How are we looking? Quite good, actually. Last time I did better, but that's okay. So I'm just going to cancel out my, my surface velocity or horizontal, even though it's not very efficient, mostly because I have a ton of fuel left. So I'm not terribly worried about all of it. There we go. Get rid of the maneuver because it doesn't matter anymore and just finish canceling out that horizontal velocity. Now, ideally, let's see, actually, you know what? Let's let's burn a little bit this way. I want to land towards the middle of that crater where it's a bit flatter. Eh, like that. Okay. And now we can just switch the other way and hold on just a moment. I have a phone call. All right, got that taken care of. And uh that looks good. Should descend pretty much right in the center of the crater. Especially if I kind of hover for a bit. I could easily afford to do this. Um, I have more than enough fuel left over. And I'm really not concerned. Honestly, I should probably ditch that lower stage here soon. Just so that I uh, can maneuver a bit better. The extra weight is causing problems. Because I don't have a... Um, what's it called? Little thingy. Oh, I can't remember right now. I just got through eating dinner and I'm all frazzled from the food. I guess, I don't know. So yes. Reaction wheel. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for. I don't have any reaction wheels on this, so it does cause some problems. Oh, there is the reaction wheel inside the probe, but that's insufficient for a vessel of this weight. I need the uh, the 0 0.65 or 625 meter um, reaction wheels, or whatever they are. I don't know how big it is. I'm going to stage and very suddenly arrest my descent. No, 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 no. Well, this is not the most um, stellar landing I think I've ever done. But it'll work. We're alive. I should have ditched that other bit a little sooner than I did. That's okay. Still think we come out with a net positive on fuel, but we shall see. I don't know about you guys, but for me, like, landing is always 
always nerve-wracking. Like, even on places I have done dozens of times, for some reason, landing is just scary to me. I always get clammy-palmed, you know? Which is funny, because I've landed on the moon a lot. And, like, this one, if I crash, so what? There's no kerbals on it. It doesn't matter. But still, it just, uh... It gets me. So that was definitely not the most efficient burn ever, but I think, yeah, that'll do very nicely. Let's grab ourselves some science real quick. Actually, let's just hit all of those up real quick. Yeah. Store, no, we don't need to store them. What am I doing? Well, I'll transmit them all, and um, we should be fine because we have a huge amount of electric charge, and of course we have those RTGs, so... We will get that science home, and I will see you guys at the Space Center. With the Elucidator having completed its mission, we've come home to a fairly hefty chunk of science. Granted, nothing compared to what it would have been had we uh, had a manned mission return, but still, lots and lots of science, and we now have mission clearance to begin manned missions to the moon, which is excellent. So, let's uh, get ready for our next little escapade. And here we are on the launch pad, taking part in the more mercenary side of space travel here at the KSC. We have a uh, contract that's asking us to take four tourists over the location K2. Now K2 is right there. So if we want to activate navigation, should be pretty simple to reach that. So let us launch and uh, see how we do. So yeah, it, it's a pretty hideous little aircraft I've got in there. You'll see it in a second. It's basically just a bunch of command pods smashed together. And I'm hoping it does okay when it has to re-enter, because I'm supposed to be in a suborbital trajectory when I go over K2, which means I need to be outside of the atmosphere, obviously. I'm not sure where it's getting that estimation. I don't see how I'd ever reach uh, K2 at the velocity I'm going, uh, regardless of how many years pass, but I don't know. We'll see. I guess it's just a very optimistic um, little estimator. I don't know. So anyway, let's begin tilting. It always drives me nuts that the uh, nav ball is opposite of what I'm seeing on screen. There we go. I should turn it that way. <laughs> so I'm not so confused. Oh, that's horrible. Anyway, so yeah, this is looking good. I could tilt a bit more because this is needs to be a much more shallow this vehicle is probably capable of achieving orbit, but I have no reason to do so. And I'm not really going to try to. So, let's see. Let's just turn this little sucker over. It's probably a bit too far. Where are we? Yeah, we're on the wrong side. Okay. So we can turn that way a bit. And actually, we don't need to see our orbital, or our uh, surface trajectory. We know where it is, and this thing has enough stability, it's not really going to be a problem. So we want to turn towards our orbital trajectory there. Mm, come on. You can do it. This thing's being kind of a beast to control right now, but it's okay. Now the reason I'm overshooting this a bit with my uh, trajectory is that the orbit of Kerbin will actually obviously shift this um, several degrees from my launch. So if I shoot straight at it, I'll miss K2 when I'm actually passing over that location. Which I'd rather not do, and I'd prefer not have to have to make a not to have to make a um, trajectory change while I'm in orbit, because inclination changes are very, very expensive. Ooh, we're going too fast. We need to go up out of the thick atmosphere. Oh dear, don't turn that hard. Uh, this may not work out as well as I'd hoped. We'll see. Ditch that, ditch that, there we go, okay. Into space. Yes. Okay, we are climbing, so that's good. Our time to apoapsis is still rising, so we are not going to fall back out of space. Excellent, excellent news. This is very good. I'm thinking that's pretty much ideal. Maybe a little too hard. Might want to burn slightly towards our objective. Well, we'll see. We'll see. 
We have enough delta v that if we have a problem, we can make an inclination change in orbit, or at least suborbital. So that should not be too much of a problem. I just don't really feel like doing it if I don't have to. So, and hopefully our little stage there survives, and or that one, I guess. We're able to get the, the money back from it. This is a very well-paying um, contract. The vessel costs something like 36,000 credits, and we'll be receiving 256,000. So there's a reason I'm doing it. It's worth a lot. Lots and lots and lots. So, definitely worth my time. Alrighty, I'm going to accelerate this in uh, the recording because it's going to take a while, and I'll see you when I get there. And I just wanted to point out, um, this is not the only uh, contract that I did during the time between missions. This happened to be one of the weirder ones. Um, I haven't done a whole bunch of these suborbital ones. In fact, I've never done one of those before in this particular uh, uh, career, and I've never really done one before, actually, ever. I, I've seen them, I just never did them. But anyway, uh, I did more. If you look at my bank account after this, you'll be able to see that there's definitely been some contracts done. This just is one of the stranger ones. But yeah, um, but also used a vessel I'd never shown before, so <laughs> I probably never use it again. But anyway, looks like we're catching up, so back to old me. Excellent, okay. If we look here, bring tourists to the waypoint is successfully completed. It took a th about a thousand delta V inclination change to do it, since I did overestimate the rotation of Kerbin. But we look like we're going to be okay. So I am just going to stage, no, I'm not going to stage, I want to do this first. Toggle info, I want to set my parachutes to uh, some reasonable height. I'm going to pump this up just a tad to about a thousand ish. There we go. Copy to other chutes and let's just arm them all. There's quite a few parachutes on this. I don't know if there's enough, but I hope so. So, one more there. And finally, I think this thing's a parachute. Arm parachute. Okay, excellent, excellent. All right, we're just going to cancel the flight computer so that we're not having it trying to hold our inclination. And uh, there we go. I will speed to the ground and see you then. To be perfectly honest, one of the reasons I don't do these kind of contracts very often, especially this early in career, is I really hate making ships that look like this. They just feel lazy and stupid and broken. I don't know. I don't like them. They do their job, but they just look retarded to me. But anyway, here comes the parachute opening, and back to old me. Hmm. Well, I don't know if you saw that, but we suffered from some dangerously early parachute deployment right there, caused by, uh, honestly, I'm not sure what. Let's tone that down a bit, because wow, that's bright. Where are we? Are we on the poles? Huh. I remember them having more texture than this. That's okay. We'll see what it looks like when we get closer to the ground. Oh my goodness. So it looks like we're going to have a safe landing most likely. I'm absolutely certain we're going to smash the front of this uh, vessel, but it should allow the capsules to land safely. So we did get lucky. Um, I don't know why those parachutes deployed as early as they did. I guess it didn't copy correctly. I should have checked them individually. But uh, yeah, let's just tilt that a little bit. Did everyone live? Everyone survived! All of our Kerbals are happy, nobody died, excellent, let's head back to the KSC. And despite some harrowing parachute failures, we, was, we were still able to bring back 250,000 credits and give our tourists an authentically terrifying KSP experience. Uh, unfortunately, it's now time to wrap up the episode, so I'm going to give you a little preview of episode 7. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please leave me a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.